will have now I will make a short presentation of the what is the echo and then we will go through the the process of the uh, these PCPs, how is the documentation and administrative, administrative issues, and then we'll go uh, to the functionalities of the challenge that has to be uh, a result in the in the challenge. And then afterward, it's an open question for you. And if any of you want to make short presentation of your company, well, you can you can you can do that at the end of the presentation. Then later on, we will go to visit the sewer in Barcelona, where the place then can be done the, the experimentation. And you will see how it is how it is actually in real. You have seen probably the video, but actually you can see uh, the present situation. Okay. Well, uh, Ecor Plus Plus is a European project in FT7 program, and then it promotes robotic innovation by facilitating the cooperation between public administration, academia, and industry. And it has three instruments. One is experiment, another is robotics facilities, and the third one is the pre-commercial procurement, the PCP, the PCP pilots, what we call. The experiments has been uh, or, <coughs> oriented to make robotic solutions to different areas. Actually, we have select three areas. One is uh, robots in industry, robots in healthcare, and robots in um, robot services in different kind of agriculture, different kind of uh, service, urban, etc. Actually, we launched the first call in the 3 of March. This was closed in the 14th of April, and the, the evaluation was done in May and June, selection in 30 of September, and the start of experiment will be in the 1st of January of next year. And uh, each one of the projects around is 300,000 euros for the experiments. And that one time is 18 months. It's going to be a second call for experiments in uh, around June next year. And then also in this, in, in any of these areas. Okay, the, the, they were presented around 140 uh, proposals. And then we selected 16 experiments. Uh, around 40 partners, con different consortiums of more than one partner, two or three partners from different areas, from different uh, sectors, from academia, from uh, industry, from uh, different. And then 13 of these have used uh, A++ RIF, RIF or Robotics Innovation Facilities. We have three uh, robotic innovation facilities, one in Bristol, about uh, robotics, uh, uh, robots applied to industry, another in in Paris for healthcare, robotics in healthcare, and the third one in uh, Pontedera, uh, close to Pisa, uh, rob robotic for services. And <clears throat> this RIFS has provided uh, platforms, robots, uh, uh, installation, infrastructure, in order that you can make trials. That is basically for experiments. But anyway, if any of the consortium uh, wants to use these facilities, can also use these facilities in the project. If you need some specific material that you do not have, you can apply for one of these. Groups. OK, the PCP is uh, we have selected two scenarios, the PCPs. One is in urban robotics, and another is in healthcare. Today, we will present both. Basically, the urban the, the, the urban one that is the, the call, but also in the last we will present the, the healthcare one in order that you have also additional information about that. There will be an info day in the fifth of December, no, the third of December in Munich about the, the this info day. Okay, the this scenario the the objective is uh, to find uh, to find a challenges. <laughs> proposed by uh, uh, public bodies in urban robotics in healthcare, and this find, uh, select one of these, and this uh, would be the one that has, will be applied. Uh, actually, in healthcare, what, in urban robotics, what we do is analyze and select public demand needs. Needs, actually, that public bodies require. And this we did by networking in academic rounds and talking directly with public bodies. And then we make, we, 
the elect uh, we contact with these public bodies and then we ask them to send proposals challenge proposals and this, from this challenge they were sent 18 from healthcare robotic, robotic challenge and 14 for urban robotic challenge and then from there an expert panel select one challenge for healthcare one challenge for urban robotics and this is the ones the challenge is the one that we will talk today and, the, and this challenge uh, the call for this will be the 15th of January that will be open the call okay. now in order that you have additional information uh, we uh, in order to select this urban robotics we we analyze with the public body 40 different urban needs and from this we receive 14 specific challenges, urban challenge. And from this challenge, it was selected the silver one. For these 14 challenges, they selected. Actually, the other ones are very, very interesting. And actually, they were, the score that they got was very high in order to be. But finally, the top one was the silver one. OK, there is the one that we will talk in detail today. But uh, we did exactly the same for uh, in a different, in a little different format for healthcare, and there were appear 18 potential challenge. And then again, an expert panel select one of these. And the one that was selected was the, the robotic geriatric assessment, the compressive geriatric assessment that also will be presented today in order to look at information about this challenge. Okay, all this information will be available in order that you have, all the slides will be available. And we will, uh, provide additional information by the 15th of December, all right? Yes. The 15th of December, you will have the, all the documentation in order that you, you can prepare uh, your uh, proposal. And the call will be open on the 15th of January and will be closed the 28th of February. Okay, that will, you will have six weeks to prepare your proposal. Okay? Today we will explain uh, all the details, but if you have any questions, please, ask us in order that we can explain as much detail as in order that you can make an excellent proposal that is what we want to have excellent proposals in this and, and to select three of them that will go for the first the first phase and two of them will go up to the end of the project but we want excellent proposals please ask us as, as, uh, everything that you need in order to get this proposal Okay, this is everything for me, and now we will go. Yes. 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 Let me introduce you a little about the process of the PCP. Alberto uh, explain a little what have we done during this year and uh, what uh, we are going to do during the next four years of the project. ECOR is a project of five years, uh, from uh, 2013 to 2018. We have started on October 2013. And uh, yes, uh, we have uh, these three main instruments. And today we are going to speak about the pre-commercial procurement PCP pilots that want to bridge the technical innovation through pu public demand identifying the cities and citizens' needs, very important, selecting the tailor-made high-quality robotic technology, is your, is your work, and to close the gap between demand and supply. So in the typical uh, relation between industry and academy, that you, I think you know perfectly, now the European Commission, not now, in 2007, they decided to introduce the public entities, the public bodies in order to know exactly the demand and join the research with the demand, the exact demand of the public entities. Two scenarios, urban robotics and healthcare, and a process that ECOR presents with uh, around eight steps, eight phases. This uh, process starts with the selection of robotic challenges and public bodies, and uh, 
we are now in the middle of, well, in, uh, we have uh, finished this part of the process, and now we start the pre-commercial procurement. Let me explain you a little what does it mean, uh, because it's not very easy, the process of a PCP, and I think it's interesting to speak about it today. The product innovation life cycle have normally these four phases. The first one is a curiosity driving research. It's an active search of needs and challenges. What do you need? A hospital. What do you need? A doctor. What, what citizens? What, are you, what do you need for your city? This is the phase zero. The phase one, phase two, and phase three are the phase for a pre-commercial procurement. And we will arrive with this pre-commercial procurement with a pre-product. We won't arrive to a product. We will arrive to a pre-product. These three phases are a narrowing down phase. So it means that we start with several proposals selected and we will go narrowing down these proposals to arrive at least at two proposals. Why at two proposals? Because if not, the public entity cannot do a normal procurement for this product. So they need compet competitive situation between uh, several uh, offers, and we need to arrive to two proposals. So what ECOR starts now, today, ECOR starts this pre-commercial procurement with these three phases. The phase one with a solution exploration. We will select three. In another PCPs, you can select five. You, you can see different uh, quantity of uh, proposals selected. We will have solutions designs three solution designs. In the phase two, we will do the prototyping. From the three first selected uh, proposals, we will select two with an, uh, an evaluation and selection of an expert panel, not by us, by, by an expert panel. We will have two prototypes, and these two prototypes will arrive in the third phase to the uh, self-test uh, field, field self-test. So uh, we will arrive to a pre-commercial procurement. And what happens with the public entity or public body that is with us during all this process, that in this moment, they can do a PPI, they can do a public procurement for commercial rollout, and they can buy the solutions. So not only is interesting because they can buy the solutions after this pre-commercial procurement, but also because the scalability of these uh, products could be incredible. So uh, the pre-commercial procurement is a process, is a procedure uh, that uh, Europe wants to use. We, uh, Europe wants uh, that uh, public entities present uh, public uh, pre-commercial procurement. And ECO is one of the projects that uh, try to, um, to improve, to, to increase this, uh, this uh, ideal situation uh, for, for uh, innovation, for technical innovation. So this is the, the, fa the three phases of the, of the PCP. And we are now here with our call for uh, research and technological development. Okay, we are here, we have worked during one year. Alberto explained a little what have we done. Mm, I will explain a little also uh, this phase zero, but let me uh, present you this, the three phases, the three phases of the pre-commercial procurement that are the phase one, the RTD activities with uh, solutions designs. The runtime will be six months. And the consortia will be select that will be selected three by scenario. So three uh, consortia in healthcare and three consortia for urban challenge, sewer inspection and maintenance. The budget forty two uh, thousand uh, euros for consortium for each consortium that present that uh, will be selected. This is the phase one. The phase two uh, is the prototype development. The runtime is twelve months. The consortia will be selected from the three first two. We will select two of them. And the budget is 145,000 uh, 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 euros per consortium. And the phase three 
is the small scale test series with a runtime of 12 months and uh, the same consortia that uh, have, do, uh, have done the prototype and with a budget of 290,000 euros for consortium. For us, it's very important also to know your opinion about this process. If for you it's okay, six months in the first, 12 and 12. This is what ECORD presents, but uh, today I are also open to uh, discuss with you about the process, about the timeline of the, of the process. So please, after uh, our presentation, don't hesitate to propose and to uh, taste or to say what uh, you think about. Uh, only to, for you to know exactly what have we done uh, during the phase zero, because we have worked during uh, practically one year with uh, public entities. We uh, start with NIS, with NIS at the Smart City World Congress of uh, 2013, last year in October here in Barcelona. We took all the memories and we tried to understand exactly what cities uh, need, uh, needed uh, and uh, we arrived to uh, several consideration, cons uh, considerations. Um, a first list of needs that we wanted to arrive uh, to um, to uh, to become a, a, a challenge, robotic challenge, not not a challenge because it's not the same to have challenge at, at the cities than to have robotic challenge. So we have worked with these public entities uh, explaining what robotics is. That is not easy for them to understand because they don't they know nothing about robotics. And uh, uh, after this work of uh, with them, we have uh, arrived to a, a proposal, uh, 14 proposals from cities. All of them are very, very interesting. Now you have here on only the name, but uh, the presentation were about uh, four pages of uh, their need and their, the, the function uh, that uh, they need for, uh, for the new technology. Uh, so very, very well explained and very close to uh, what can be uh, a public procurement for innovation, for technological innovation. So uh, from these 14 uh, proposals, an expert panel in September select the utilities infrastructure condition monitoring, seaward inspection as the uh, Ecor Plus Plus challenge, urban challenge uh, best. And uh, uh, after this, we are going to uh, develop this uh, challenge up, uh, with uh, our first uh, call uh, next uh, January. The result was this challenge in urban robotics and the city selected was uh, Barcelona City Council and Becasa. The proposal come, uh, came from Becasa. Becasa, I will present you later on and we will have here uh, the representatives of Becasa during the morning. Uh, so, uh, Barcelona Cicla de Laigua, water cycle, is a company created by the City Council of Barcelona that manages the entire uh, city urban water cycle and provides direct and indirectly services related to the water cycle, to the beaches, and to the coastline and the environment. The, the challenge propose, uh, that they proposed were uh, centered in uh, sewer inspection, not beaches. Mm -hmm. The company is attached to the Deputy of Environment and Urban Services within the Urban Habitat Department and perform, perform its, its functions under the leadership, supervision and control of the Water Cycle Services Direction. Okay, okay this is the same we have uh, seen now, uh, now with uh, our challenge. Uh, now we have now the challenge, Robots for Inspection and the Clearance of the Seaward Network in Cities. And we have the call for uh, research and technological proposals the, on January 15, and uh, we will end it at uh, February uh, 28, and we will have all the call documentation on uh, December 15. We will try to, because uh, the time for this part of the process has been very, very short. So also for the call, for the info day, uh, sorry for this but we will uh, have uh, this information. Only to know 
more or less what uh, we have asked at the, at the experiments uh, call. Here you have uh, more or less the template, eh? the research solution objective, the progress beyond the current state of the technology, the concept, methodology, and associated work plan, a task list, description of individual, individual tasks. Don't forget that we are in a call of the European Commission. It's more or less the same that an European, the European Commission asked for the calls. So we are managing this call, but we are, this is an European Commission call. Don't forget it, please. The list of deliverables, the summary of experiment, well, in this case, the summary of experiment effort in persons month, PM, list of milestones, impact, implementation and business plan. It's very important for us, the business plan also, because we want to know if uh, we have uh, really success in our proposals, what will happen with the uh, two pre products uh, that we will arrive to have. Uh, the business plan can give us an idea uh, about uh, if uh, the possibilities to have a, a commercial one are, and uh, this is uh, very important also for this project because we want to have new products uh, at the market and not only to improve and increase uh, technological uh, solutions, technological innovation, but also to have new products and robotic products at the market. The evaluation criteria, more or less, we have uh, now, we are now uh, working in this, but the scientific and technological excellence more or less is the same as all the European projects that uh, uh, if you are, if you use to, to work with uh, European projects is more or less the same. The efficiency of the implementation, the expected impact. Okay, well, you will have it. And only three words for the advantage for small and medium enterprises. You know that Europe wants to, uh, to go, um, better in the way of uh, to, to, to increase the, the, um, the work of these uh, SM uh, enterprises and only three few wo uh, words about that you can implement your innovation, pilot your solution to prove its value directly to decision makers, very, very important, evaluate its impact, gather intelligence for product development and gain a validated market reference. So this is what are we trying to give to you. Huh? Marketing opportunity and international exposure, present your solutions directly for evaluation by decision makers. We will have the public body during all the process. The public body in ECOR is financed also, and uh, uh, they will be with us monitoring all the process. Meet key city leaders. In this case, you will meet uh, all the Becasa leaders today and all along the project i think maria jose and all the team, all the team of the casa will be with us so we you can have the inputs and and what they think about what are you doing the connection to other to stakeholders in our case the connection is directly with the public entity not with citizens but is very uh, important and the support in search for investors so echo plus plus TCP pilots creates opportunity to reach out to potential investors and funders of the innovation and works carefully to ensure that the innovation will answer real demand. That is what Europe asks us. Okay, so save the dates. The, the, the info day of today is uh, the info day in urban robotics. The next info day is the third in Munich for healthcare challenge and the call will be in January 15 and you will uh, we will uh, inform you uh, uh, about all the mm, the dates that are important all the information in our website eco uh, eu and um, thank you nothing else if it's okay for you uh, i don't know if we have questions now or i prefer perhaps that maria luis uh, perhaps can open more this process all the things related to administrative uh, documentation and after we make a little part of uh, questions. Thank you. Can, can I ask something? Oh, yes. Uh, you included a company in B in the first phase. You said that only three companies. Yes, I include one because it, uh, I wanted to explain you what a PCP is. 
and perhaps the PCP has in the first phase five, six, seven, or eight companies. But ECO, only three. Okay. So the fourth is, is irrelevant to, to this uh, call? Yes, the fourth is irrelevant in this in this case. It's only to show you that the PCP uh, normally have a narrowing down process. Mm -hmm. it, st it starts perhaps with eight or six. They arrive to five, four, and then they arrive to three, two, four. No, the number is uh, is not exactly as ECOR presents. No? ECOR presents three, two, and two. So maybe I start a little bit with introducing myself. My name is Marie Louise Knights. I'm coming from the Technical University of Munich. I'm leading the ECOR Plus Plus project together with my scientific colleague Reinhard Lachwenz, and I'm more or less replacing Professor Knoll today, who is the coordinator of this European project. Um, maybe just one word in addition to what um, Alberto has already outlined. Um, the total funding volume of ECOR Plus Plus over the five years is about 20 million euro. So I, it's fair to say that this is probably one of the biggest European uh, projects on robotics. And that's why we have a specific, um, yeah, we are, we, are, we are scrutinized by the national contact points, and but it's a, it's a, it's a fairly high profile uh, project at the European Commission. Um, we have been uh, talking about the PCP and the PCP pilots and so uh, on and so forth for quite a while now. Maybe um, I would like to explain you a little bit about the history because um, the intention, when we wrote and submitted the proposal, the intention um, of our initiative was to find a way to um, ideally or to, to in, uh, integrate public bodies in an ideal way in the technology development for public, um, for the public sector. Um, this, we have done this because we believe, it's our strong belief that there is a tremendous market potential on the public side that we can tap to a certain extent with, uh, with robotics technology. And that is why we in uh, integrated this instrument in uh, the proposal. But there is a difference between the PCP, as you might know that, and the PCP pilots that we will implement in ECOR++. This will have um, a diff that the difference will have uh, impact on funding, on the administrative part, and also on the way how we handle the financial issues and how we do the monitoring of the uh, technology development during the um, the technology development phase. So what we would, or what we wanted is we have ECOD plus plus is a follow up project on ECOD, which has been running for five years before. Um, this project just implemented or just included the experiments and we had very positive um, experiences with the experiments and we wanted to implement this scheme on the de development of technology development for, for the public sector and that is exactly what we want to do in ECOR++. This is something that we have heard already so we'll skip that. Um, as Anna already explained, um, we have selected, or our independent experts have selected two different challenges, one in urban robotics and one in, uh, in healthcare. On the 15th of January, we are going to open a um, public call, an open call um, for uh, RTD proposals. So it's not a call for tender, it's a call for proposals, which is the difference. Um, we would like to, um, I mean, we have discussed internally um, which skills we think would be good to have in the consortia applying for funding um, uh, starting 15th of uh, January. So we feel, and this is very important, it's the speciality of ECOR++ plus plus and the experiments, and this will also be a uh, speciality uh, uh, of the PCP pilots. You can have national consortia. So you don't need to look for international uh, um, uh, partnership. You can work with people that you know close by, as long as you are um, you have uh, complementary skills and and pre present a strong proposal. So nationality is not an issue. Um, the abilities and the knowledge that we think would be desirable to have at a consortium is you will need to have uh, the 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 ability 
to assess the feasibility of the project technology. So you develop a technology and during the runtime you have to have the, the ability to see whether the technology that you develop really need, uh, fulfills the need of the public body. And the public body will accompany the entire process to make sure and steer the, the, the technology development process during the runtime. Then it would be good that you have the, the opportunity, uh, the, the, the skill to know how you would like to position the final product that you develop on the market of reference. So you need to know the rival products, you need to know which kind of technology components is already available on the market and at which TRL level they are so that you, that you know the competition that, that you would probably face or have to face um, in the future. Um, I think cost efficiency is always an issue when we are talking about co collaboration with public with the public sector, and uh, it's good that I mean that you that you have people in on your consortium who know which components they can address in order to reduce the cost of the technology development and to pro provide a cost effective solution. And um, it's not necessarily in the very first place a research project. Mm. I think it is a project where you will have a certain degree of system integration as well, using technology that is already on the market and trying to combine components in an ideal way in order to fulfill uh, the need of the public of the public body in sewer inspection. The administrative procedure. Um, as we have already outlined, we are going to um, open um, an open call for RTD proposals um, first of, uh, 15th of January. Then we will select independent experts, we will evaluate those proposals, we will have a selection panel at the end, and they will select three consortia per challenge. The people selected, the consortia selected, will join ECOG++ via an, an amendment. So you will become, the people who have been successful will become part of the project, being integrated via an amendment. And now I have a question. Does everybody know what an amendment is and how that works? Because that is um, decisive to a certain extent. So you are familiar with the scheme. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? No? Um, if you can say a few words. Okay. <laughs> so, our um, co collaboration between ECOR Plus Plus and the European Commission is based on a grant agreement. So, each European project has a number, an identification number, and this is the grant agreement number. This is our contract. In addition to that, you have within the core consortium a consortium agreement where it's regulated, which kind of rights we have, who, who, who belong the, 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 the technology development, who can use it, and things like that. Um, when we select people, or independent experts, evaluate with the proposals, and pick the people with the strongest proposals to become, let's say, uh, the partners to develop the technology. Um, those people need to get registered if they have not already been registered, call it validated, with the European Commission, and then you get an identification code. You need to submit um, some kind of documentation which concerning your status, whether you are an SME or a large company or research institution or whatever. And based on this, you will get um, reg uh, validated, and this validation has an impact on the funding that you will get. So um, you have either 55% because it's an FP7 project still, you have either 75% funding or 50% funding on RTD, and you have a specific and different uh, indirect cost model, working with flat rates or with, with, with actual indirect costs. And this depends on the kind of, of in institution that you are. And this will be uh, validated with the European Commission. This can be a time-consuming process, but as we have in ECORD um, and also in ECORD++ quite a lot, lot long-standing experience in this, we have personal and direct contact to the people from the validation team, and that's why we are able to speed up the process and to help you with your validation process. 
and I will come to that in a second, will also take all the administrative burden from you uh, to the extent possible, we will reduce the reporting load to the absolute minimum, and I will just say a few words about that as well, in order for you to concentrate on the research and on, on the, the, de the technology development, because that is what we want from you and what we need from you, not the administration, that will be our part. So we have a consortium agreement in ECOT++ for the core consortium, which stipulates that for the consortia that we are doing the de technology development, they will have the IP rights of this technology development. It will not be the public body. It will be yours afterwards, and you can exploit that. So the public body will be there because they are interested in, getting, in using the technology afterwards, and they will help you to find a way to find a design that absolutely fulfills the need of, of, the, of, the, of the public body that they have. Then, and this is mandatory because uh, for PCP, because we want to make sure that we don't have any trouble afterwards. Um, there will be a consortium agreement for the technology development consortia as well. We will provide a draft that you can use. You can uh, modify the draft and everything, but what is important for us is that you do that. Because if you tap a huge market potential, and that is what we, what we would like to reach, we would like to reach this point that it is a huge market potential that you can tap afterwards, then it must be clear who has which rights in the consortium. Then we have the funding scheme. As uh, Anna already explained, we have three different phases, and we will allocate the budget always for the respective phase. And we want to regulate this um, via a uh, framework agreement, and that is something that we are already working on, uh, or still working on right now. So you will have a, a framework agreement which regulates the budget allocation for the three different phases. This is because the budget, I mean, we will start with three consortia per challenge at the beginning, but those will be reduced based on milestone reviews. So we cannot allocate the budget for the entire runtime at the, at the start, at the beginning, because we can only allocate for the first six months at the first step, and then second phase and third phase. Um, then we have also a budget for the public bodies, which is not tremendous, but at least it helps to um, cover some travel expenses and also some, um, some effort that the public bodies will invest in this um, project. And as you see from the different phases, the share of the equipment that you have in the budget increases. It's just, I mean, it's just an indicative budget, but the tendency is that it increases as 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 closer you come to the um, to the small scale test series. Um, the amendment process is something that I've already outlined um, very briefly. So you you're, you will have you will need a pick. Uh, you can apply for a provisional pick at the moment when you want to submit a proposal. For the uh, permanent pick, we'll help you afterwards with the validation process. You will have your indirect cost model um, as in FP7, um, and we will collect all the information by template or with templates that we need to get you into the NEF system of the European uh, Commission. So you don't need to uh, do anything apart, let's say, more or less, from completing Excel sheets for us and submitting those on time. Um, yeah, so, and all the, we are in very close, close contact with the validation team, so we know exactly which kind of data and documents they would need. And we can facilitate this pro, 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 uh, process because you have someone at our team whom you can call. So you can send us direct emails, you can call us, and we will answer your questions if you have them. Um, the funding. We are going to give you pre-financing uh, for the individual phases. So hardware, durable equipment, and consumables will be refunded, pre-funded at 100% with a cost capping, and I would like to come to that point in, in a few seconds. And then we would like to have 40% in personnel costs and travel expenses, pre-funded, for the individual phases. 
Then we have the indirect cost model, as already explained, based on the validation. And after that, you will have the possibility to claim your costs based on cost claims, um, which is the regular process in European funded projects. Um, again, we will help you to facilitate this process. And we have a platform where you can enter all your costs so you don't need to, um, yeah, to, to, um, to struggle with, with, a, with a couple of things that normally in European projects are might, not always so smooth. And then we have the reporting period starting or start counting from 1st of October 2013. Our reporting periods are 21st, 37, 49, and 16 months. Um, before I come to this point, I would like to explain a little bit how we would like to monitor the pro progress um, of, the, uh, of the different um, groups working on the RTD de uh, technology development. Um, we are going to, for our experiments, we have a platform, a monitoring platform. Um, based on our experience with ECORD, we have, um, I think, quite drastically changed that. So we will have a monitoring session with you every two months, but there will be no reports. What we would like to define with you in advance is which kind, based on the technology development that you are doing, which kind of data you can share with us at, that, at which point in the technology development, which allows us to check what you are doing without having any um, obligation for you to write lengthy reports. So what we are thinking about, you can send us <laughs> videos, you can send us pictures, you can send us simulation, you can send us software data, whatever you like. But the only thing is we would like to need to know that in advance so that we know which kind of data we would define the technology features, technological features that you will concentrate on in your development. And based on this, we will define together with you in the negotiation phase which kind of material you are going to share with us at the, which point so that we can know that we know what you are doing and you can concentrate on the research rather than writing reports. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this will, will work well. I, we are doing that with the experiments right now and I have the impression that reaction is quite positive. So um, Anna explained that we would like to support you afterwards in, ex, uh, in the exploitation of your technology by also, I mean, we have already contacts to more than 3,000 institutions and we will use that, those contacts to, um, to increase the impact at the end. So we will make our contribution as well and we will try to support you in getting those technology on the market. We also have uh, contacts with um, uh, venture capitalists, and so we have a different kind of people. Um, we are fairly well networked, and we are quite, quite highly ranked at the European Commission, and they are very open and very willing to support us in our initiative, because ECOR++ is one of the flagship projects of the European Commission, and this can be an advantage for those people working in the project. Um, all what we would like to have or to reach is to create the impact in urban robotics with our initiative. And um, this is a statement from um, the CEO of Red Zone Robotics. Rob robotics has lots of opportunities in the future because the cost curve have come down to a point where robots can help solve real marketplace problems. There's a very huge market for cost-effective solutions, which doesn't mean cheap, but cost-effective also in comparison to what you would have to invest if you would like to continue with that power. Um, they need tailor-made products are expected to optimize the public economic resources. And ECOD++ and its network will help proposers to tap, to tap this market potential. Thank you very much for your attention and we would like to answer your questions if you have any. Okay. Everything clear? Yes. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay. So um, if, you, if you feel that afterwards you have something that you would like to discuss, or find me at lunch break and also at coffee break. Okay.
to the CASA team, first of all, and uh, Albert Vilanta is the conciliar of the board of directors of the CASA. Thank you, Albert, to be here with us. Uh, I think ECOR is a very nice project and the CASA is a good company to, to be with us. Gustavo Ramon is the operation director. Thank you, Gustavo. Josep Garriga, Garriga is the head of inspection service. So you have all the team of Picasa in order to ask them questions or what you need. And uh, Maria Jose Chesa is the head of research, development and innovation. And the team of Maria Jose is Ana Yopard and Lina Martinez that are also here. So thank you to all of you and uh, your time. Hello, morning. Uh, we start our presentation with some uh, introduction about the CASA, Barcelona Water Cycle, some data resource about sanitation, uh, the specific challenge in urban robotics, the functions of the new technology, and the impact that we expect. The Barcelona Water Cycle mission is to manage, coordinate, monitor, optimize with quality, sustainability, participation, uh, the provision of integrated water cycle services like supply, sanitation, integrated coastal management. All these commitments are uh, organized to uh, improve the environment and fight to the climate change to achieve a sustainable, improved quality of life for citizens. The strategic lines of the CASA are promote some policies for in order to reduce water consumption, promote policies to improve urban drainage, promote policies to improve the integrated management of the coast. Every line is strategic as the important uh, policies that for uh, water consumption, ensuring rational use, ensuring the quality of supply, and promoting the improvement of the de and de development of the entire water cycle system. And collaborate with other administration in the development of the hydraulic plants and projects. About the urban drainage, uh, improving the, qu the quality and the extension of the sewer system, controlling and supervising the, man the management of the sewer network, and uh, improving the understanding, the control, and supervision or of condition of the sewer system. In the integrated coastal management, it's important the, to promote the new culture of, of the beach for citizens and tourists, uh, coordinating all the operators and improve, improving the services offered. Uh, the main objectives in the water sanitation uh, are the planif planification and inspection of the sewer system, the control and monitor of the condition of the sewer network, coordinate the work schedule cleaning of the sewer network, manage, monitor, and inspect project and restoration of the network, supervise the construction of private drains, uh, all private works, manage, monitor, and inspect the projects and, and works of, of all kinds of sanitation, collect data, and prepare uh, studies of rainfall and other impact for, on the sewer network and at last, uh, develop regulation on building materials and construct construction techniques of the network to ensure its uniformity. Uh, Barcelona, about the, the main uh, data for the sewer network, Barcelona has a combined sewer system network, and uh, sometimes <laughs> there, is, there is a problem for its manage. The uh, total extension of the sewer network is about 1,500 kilometers, 
and with a thousand of main holes, drains, connections, and a lot of uh, different uh, instruments, and 15 water tanks to control the, the rainfall in this episode. And other data, there are uh, so, uh, important extension of optical fiber inside the galleries of uh, sewer system. It's important to reflect that the, the management of the sewer networks consists in several tasks. Uh, the cleaning of existing network, the reconstruction and rehabilitation of the existing network, the sewer inspection, and the, uh, the advancement management of the sewer network. All these activities uh, cost uh, an important budget for, for the municipalities. In the case of Barcelona City, the cost of the sewer inspection is about 1 million euros per year, and it uh, represents the 12-50% uh, of the total budget for uh, sewer uh, works, for sewer management. About the, this specific challenge in urban robotics, uh, it's important to, to, to explain that the, the work inside the sewer network is very hard for and unhealthy for the for the staff because uh, the condition inside these places are, are very extreme sometimes and introducing a robotic solution could uh, improve on um, uh, the this this uh, labor risks and could improve the quality uh, the, pre the precision of the sewer inspection and could optimize the sewer cleaning resources in the city. Uh, the robot uh, should determine the quantity of sediments in the sewer to define cleaning schedule. Other proposed functions could be effects identification, cartography, and monitoring and sampling. These uh, functions uh, that we ask for the, in the new technology uh, are uh, sediment inspection, identification of structural defects, sewer monitoring, and water, air, and sediment sampling. At last, the, it's important to, to ask the, for the sewer cartography. Uh, about the, maybe the, the most important function is the sediment inspection for the volume that it requires. And it's important to, to talk about the, the robot autonomy that we think is, it could be interesting, uh, minimum four hours battery, about the trail that the robot uh, <coughs> should be make in, in, every, in every day. Uh, the optimum could be 3,000 meters in eight hours, and the minimum uh, 1,500 meters in, in eight hours about the the conditions uh, inside the, the sewer system uh, it's, it's necessary to explain that the for for small pipe sizes the technology sometimes uh, the, the state of the art uh, are uh, um, good results with a small diameter but from diameters from um, 80 centimeters, um, the results are not good. We, we need more, uh, we need this technology. And the, it's, in, it's, in, it's necessary to explain that the, to, to enter inside the sewer, sewer system, we have the manholes with, with this, uh, with this uh, size. Another function uh, is the identification of a structural defects that I explained. No? Another condition for this new technology is, is the, the cost. Uh, we can talk about a new technology, fantastic technology, but it's in, impossible to, to use because the price is, is not uh, appropriate. And about this, uh, all the, we, we, we think that all the, the service 
for uh, this technology uh, should be less than f 50 cents uh, with all included. Uh, in this moment, for, for these inspections with, uh, with the staff, we need four, four people for these works. We, we think that the new technology, we can optimize this, uh, this work and the, the, the price uh, could be about this, this order. Uh, about the sediment inspection in the sewer system of, of Barcelona City, we have, we have a lot of uh, special <laughs> sizes and different uh, situations that we, we, we will describe very clearly in, in our document challenges. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll show you some examples about these, uh, these sediment inspections. Another function that we propose is uh, identify critical structural defects and, and, location, and his location using the European regulation for this, for this uh, function. We can, we can see the different structural defects that we hope uh, the urban robotics could improve in, in our services. Other proposal function will be the sewer monitoring uh, to to have a, a, to avoid the, the access to to sewers in in the at risk situation and to uh, to improve the health and safety safety measures for the staff. Uh, about the sewer monitoring, we propose uh, different sensors, air sensors, water sensors, and general functions. And, and this, uh, this function uh, aims to, to make decisions without exposing to the risk situation to our staff. The, sometimes the, the sediment sampling is very important to, to uh, make a good environment polite, to identify the different industries or different companies that don't <laughs> make good uh, things that uh, you, can, you can see in this image. And it's, it's very, very interesting to have the, the samples with the specific compounds, and sometimes it's very dangerous for our staff to um, make these, these samples. And we, we, th we think that with this new technology, we can improve this, this service. There are other, other examples about this, the water, air, and sediment sampling. <coughs> about the other function that we propose, is the sewer cartography, and, and we uh, hope that this new technology could uh, give accurate knowledge, knowledge about the actual infrastructure. Um, develop uh, this uh, function could uh, help develop us the, the hydraulic hydraulic models, uh, making more efficient all this operation, and provide greater flexibility in the distribution of information. Uh, for for our knowledge and to share with with the externally requirements, and this uh, sewer cartography could uh, help the management and for and the rehabilitation of, of our sewer sewer system. <clears throat> there are some pictures about the sing singularities of the sewer system and the difficulty to work inside with uh, slope changes, with connection in different uh, levels. At, uh, uh, at last, the different uh, impacts that we expect. We expect a social and cultural impact, environment, economic, innovation. <coughs> and we, we think that it's, it's very realistic, uh, it's a good, all these uh, functions that we, we talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
the sewer gallery that we we will visit this this uh, afternoon uh, is uh, different than <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. It's easier. <laughs> And also to it's, prepared, it's prepared for, for VC. It's a turi touristical unusual <laughs> system network. <laughs> so the it's light, it's very clean. clean. <laughs> but here we want to show the difficulties and the, the characteristics of the, of the sewer system of Barcelona. We have to do it. diameter and size uh, sewers network. To hear the, the, the wastewater. The light is also important because uh, it's yes. the man that is. Uh, yes, yes, it's, it's with, 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 a, with a light and light. If not, it's with a light. Yes, yeah. basically. You can see here no, some stairs, some different characteristics inside there. This is basically the visitable network. A part of these, there are the, the no visitable, but the smallest diameters. Well, here we can see a, a detention tank. Collectors are the, the collectors near the sea, yes. <laughs> The collectors are right to the, to the interceptor, the collector interceptor that sent the water to the wastewater treatment plant, and finally the exit to the, to the sea, to the beaches. <coughs> Well, uh, thank you very much, Maria Jose. Well, I haven't been introduced before. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Antoni Grau. Uh, I'm with the Technical University of Catalonia. I'm with the ECOR staff. And well, uh, our role is uh, obviously to manage the ECOR project and also to monitoring, to be monitoring all the experiments and also the projects that will be present and also the winners, those that will be selected for to, to develop the challenge that will be also uh, monitored by, by us. Uh, well, mm, we have been seeing uh, in this part, technical part, this moment has been very, very technical. And uh, let me only uh, show uh, just a couple of uh, slides uh, to, uh, not, not to say uh, what you have to do, because you are the experts, so you will be the experts, and you'll be preparing the proposals, but also to, to uh, focus the, the, the problem. No? The problem, uh, I haven't seen anyone running away after the video, and this is uh, very important because uh, uh, our role is to encourage that uh, you prepare, independently of uh, how tough have you seen the, the project or the challenge or even the video, uh, there are a lot of things to do, and uh, we hope that you as experts and other experts that will be presenting the proposals, uh, you will know how to manage uh, this challenge. Maria Jose presented those insights, and I want to focus, to emphasize 
the, the last one, I'm sorry, uh, the ability to execute. The ability to execute at the end is uh, we expect some uh, realistic projects. Uh, even though it's a research project, uh, at the end, uh, some prototypes or some equipment will have to be built and to be produced. And for the reason, uh, we need some realistic expectation. That is very important. And these realistic expectations are in the other side of the, of the challenge. Independently of how tough or how hard is, is the challenge, uh, take into account that at the end you have to be uh, building some prototype. This is not to, to uh, scare uh, you, just the opposite. This is to encourage you that you present your projects in, uh, this is the five objectives, that five different fields and not complementary or sometimes complementary, but it, it doesn't matter how complementary are those fields. The idea is that you present in any of these five objectives and also independently on how deep you arrive to the end to achieve the objectives of each field. This is uh, very important for us. Uh, well, some uh, annotations, my annotations, not yours. For me, when I'm thinking in, in robotics in, in this environment, you have seen the, the images are very uh, difficult. Oh. And what you'll be visiting this afternoon is the most uh, friendly area of, of the, the sewerage system. But uh, at the end, uh, not uh, all the areas are so easy as that you'll be visiting this afternoon. There are more challenges or so more uh, difficult challenges that you will see this afternoon. But I'm thinking in robots, uh, we'll be thinking maybe in willet, in crawlers, in amphibious, even in legged, or even in flying. Uh, some solutions nowadays in, in flying robotic swarm, amphibious, a combination of both, or, or, or well, it depends. Uh, it's up to you what kind of robot you present. And also, uh, you can be presenting an uh, existing robot with uh, your adapted software, or even you can present uh, your own robot. But, uh, it's up to you. Uh, there's some, some ideas. Also, the robot can be autonomous or teleoperated. Also, it's independent, with, also with cable or without cable. Uh, don't, don't be tired. To the idea of being completely autonomous without a cable and be using a cable. The idea is, is open. More ideas about the sensors. Uh, sewers is a very uh, hostile environment. There's no light, there's no Wi Fi uh, coverage, there's no GPS uh, coverage. And then any kind of sensors that you are thinking of, uh, we use it. And we use it navigation, any kind of uh, inertial navigation system, and we use cameras, not only uh, high definition but also in, in low resolution also for, for navigation, and lasers, uh, leaders, sonars also, or some uh, areas with uh, with water, audio. And also some actuators, not only sensors, but any kind of actuators could be in, in mind, uh, any kind of manipulator. Also for a special structures, those manipulators uh, could be used for handling high definition cameras. Okay. It's also it's up to you what kind of manipulators, if needed. If needed, also take into account that one of the objectives is to uh, take some samples of the, of the sediments and also, you can be thinking any actuators to pick up the samples, the solid ones, the liquid, uh, or even the, the gaseous samples uh, to be collected. And well, finally, uh, the environment is very hostile, and the environment cannot be modified. Uh, the CASA and the, and the authorities uh, won't be modifying the environment in order to put all your sensors on all the uh, equipment that, that you need. The sewer is the sewer, like this. And uh, one of the things that we can uh, do is to set uh, some passive RFID tags. This also is, is possible. Take into account 
that uh, specific distances a set of RFID passive tags, passive, uh, never active, uh, could be set. Also, this could be help you in order to prepare your ideas or uh, your proposals. Also, there is no light. Take into account that uh, if an autonomous system uh, will be running during several hours in the sewerage with uh, high illumination, the battery consumption could be uh, high. Take into account also this area. And uh, well, wait, wait a moment. The, the questions after after the presentation. Um, well, uh, that's uh, only my technical uh, appointment. Uh, nothing else. This is up to you. What technology? What kind of robot? What kind of sensors? The environment is uh, closed, and closed means that only a set of uh, passive variety tags could be set on the environment. Uh, no more. Well, and also, uh, I repeat, uh, my idea is to encourage you in order to prepare uh, your proposals. Uh, we'll be waiting for your questions during the uh, uh, during the call is open. We'll be answering your questions. You know, have uh, questions about the sensors, the um, kilometers of the sewers, the uh, characteristics of the sewers. Uh, we will respond to you in order that you prepare or you accommodate your presentation or your proposal according to uh, those futures. Okay. We'll be open to, to your questions. Uh, well, I think uh, that's all. Do you have some questions or do you want to say some words uh, from the CASA? Yes, you well, are here and... maybe uh, I should have introduced my Jose before, but uh, uh, from the CASA, and we are very proud to be, have been selected for this project. Uh, the CASA is, uh, is the way we manage the, all the water cycle in, in Barcelona. It's a, it's a new public company that it, it goes from first uh, this, this year. Uh, and it, uh, we manage uh, the sewage uh, network, the fountain, the beach, even the, the river, the uh, which uh, all the all the control access uh, there. Uh, we uh, the idea of the casa is to manage uh, all the water system in, in the city uh, in an inter integrated way. That's the main objective. We are uh, we are a, a very good team of people. Uh, we are almost uh, 100 people person. Uh, from uh, we, we we manage uh, the operation. We we also do projects. We we do the, the direction of the works. Uh, always uh, about the the sewage uh, network. And our budget is about uh, twenty million euro uh, each year. So um, our team it's it's very it's very. Uh, well prepared and we will work uh, uh, to this project for a core to uh, with, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, force it's a big challenge for us because uh, to have a robot in, in the network uh, working there it's it's a big challenge it's a new thing it's something that we have to to manage uh, in a good way with our own people, because maybe uh, some some persons who are doing this work, we will, he will change uh, the kind of work they will have to do. And I think it's also a challenge for, for the companies, a, a robotic challenge, mm -hmm. you say. It's a, it's, a, it's a very, very great challenge. So, uh, we are, we are uh, very proud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else? Mm -hmm. well, only to see that, as Jose and Andres said, what we already expected from the part of the operation, no? that, that we are the, the people who are all day in the in, 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 in field, in the, working with all the problems, with mm -hmm. all the 
and we are very expected in, what, in, in, in your proposals, no, and, and in this project. And well, we are here to respond to some questions and some technical aspects, and or to, in order to uh, have all the information in order to propose them. <laughs> propose them. We are sure that that will come. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, so, Maria Luis, please. Yeah, I ask you one question. You have already an idea about the diameters which are interested in the group for this fuel? Yes. Because you, you have uh, outlined that there are quite um, good robotic solutions for smaller diameters. Diameters more than uh, 80, no? 80 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Bigger. Bigger mm -hmm. than 80. Mm -hmm. Uh, many many research has been done in pipes, uh, 40, 60, or near eight, uh, 80 centimeters. But uh, just a few experiments have been done in, in uh, high galleries, in uh, one meter and a half or two meters. There's no research or no uh, commercial product right now. For, for small sizes, five sizes, there are a, a lot of products now. And the result is, is a no. Mm -hmm. It could be improved the speed and the efficiency, but uh, without the our problem is in, in bigger structures, in galleries from this this size. Mm -hmm. Visitables or semi visitables, yes. no? Uh -huh. Well, a little man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because they are, Eight, they, are, they are in the medium size, no, no, not the size we have. Seen in the, in the video, or not the smallest one, but they are intermediate. But uh, it's very difficult to go to go in, and with a very difficult uh, with a lot of risk. And it's one of, one of the field that uh, the manholes are the, the only way to get the, the robotic system inside the, the galleries, or not? Yes. yes. That makes no, now, way. yes. We refer to the previous only that the diameter of the manholes is only 70 centimeters, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but I can see also some stairs that they're using for the men to go down. So this will reduce the, the, the diameter. The stairs that you uh, yes. have seen in, in the video yes. are in the gallery, not for, for the axis of the sewer network. It's, it's part of the no, sewer network. There were some stairs if I can, to, that I saw it's through the manholes so that they were using to go down. Not this. So these are the pieces diameter of the manhole. Well, the, 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 the normally the, the manhole is well, the manhole around the circle because it's open and you go inside yes. and then the the the, the tube to go inside with the part with the, the stairs, no? Uh, well, normally it's a, it's a little bigger than the than the than the, than the diameter of the of the, of the axis. Is the Barcelona sewage system uh, quite typical? Would it be applicable to all sorts of European cities in your experience? Um, I think in, in, in the characteristics of the sewer, it's a unitary, uh, I mean, no, a combined sewer system. Mm -hmm. Combined sewer, sewer and, sewer, yes. and the brain, brain, brain uh, water, yeah. quite similar. Basically, yes. Are, are, are similar, no? Of course, there are other examples, no? Uh, the, that there are unitary systems, or, or there are um, separative systems, and of course, are different. But in unitary or, or, or combined system, yes. Uh, is it necessary to carry any underwater inspections? The water underwater, underwater inspections. Is it necessary? Um, well. We have seen that the not well normally there are there are um, the the part uh, dry part that you can walk okay and the the, the, the lowest part where the, the water runs the, the waste water runs but for example there are well in, in the, the last images that we have seen there are the, in the in the, the big collectors that arrive to the sea uh, the, the normally there you can uh, find uh, that the water covers you know, all the all the surface. Mm -hmm. But this sea water, yes, is the sea water you have seen there. The young handicap, the pan inspection of siphons, sería un producto muy interesante determinar quién se alimenta ni más entre los siphons. For example, there, there are other, other, other elements, no? the, the siphons, no? inside, the, inside the network that have full cover of water, 
and it would be a good element to uh, to see what are the uh, the, the, the waste inside the, the residual inside the, this this kind of, of element. For example, these are copper chloride. Sí, uh, Aquests sifons són importants. Tenim fins a 300 metres de llargada. Evacuar tot l'aigua per fer una inspecció en 300 metres de sediment. These sifons are hard. Can, can have uh, th 300 meters of, of, of land and mm -hmm. to, to empty all, all this uh, all this water it, it's uh, it's a cost but we have uh, we have tools to inspect these uh, these uh, these elements mm -hmm. uh, online without without uh, sometimes you have to cross a, a metro tunnel and you have to siphon very a long one mm -hmm. 300 meters mm -hmm. and it's always full of water mm -hmm. so it, it could be very interesting to but this is a singularity. Yes. Yes. This well, the big uh, <laughs> we, uh, we have a lot of yes. problematic yes. that we have to clean and, 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 and periodically to have to empty the water. Well, it's like, uh, but, uh, right now, this objective <laughs> is not included in the functions. Yes. You can see. And also in my list of uh, radical robots, I haven't put any uh, UAB. There are no underwater automated vehicles. But uh, wait for the for the proposal. This is just a presentation. That will be a formal proposal, uh, a formal presentation for the goal, and maybe uh, and the, and the, the we'll the, that as a, a sixth objective. Why not? No, in order after after this uh, ah, discussion about the inspections, if it is necessary to make any inspections underwater. Inspections. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, the, the, they said there are the 300, 300 pipes uh, fully uh, uh, water, and maybe this kind of UAB robots uh, should be necessary. But, but but of course the problem one the, 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 the robot can can of course. Uh, to go with inside the, the condition we have seen, no? There yeah. are water, there are yeah, yeah. 50 centimeters of water in the weather, but it's, it's, a condition. it's not clean uh, water. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you said that it's okay to have um, uh, robot swords, and um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to contrast this with the um, uh, for our uh, autonomy. So is it possible to have to consider that the swan is uh, Basically, one robot and the collective uh, autonomy is for our. Maybe some uh, of the robots can go at a specific distance, uh, and this one, some other can do the rest. I mean, like sharing this. Uh, Don't be restricted uh, for the four hours of autonomy. Okay. okay. Don't be tired uh, for this restriction. Put your own bounds. It's also interesting for us. This is what I say. I want to encourage you. But here, this uh, this is a top requirements, okay? But you can put your own limits to the proposals. That will be accepted at least uh, for a study in the top. How many times by the have to monitor each part of the cycles? Uh, different uh, three levels. Slopes. 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 And the high part of Barcelona, uh, we have more no, no slope. 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 And the medium part of Barcelona is medium slope, and 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 the, the coast part is, is very flat. So we we can we can uh, make the inspection three times a year in the in the lowest part. In the lowest part. And one time a year in the high yeah, yeah. It depends on the. Okay, so it's you know? Zone, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Because in, 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 the, in the coastline, in, in, the, in the flattest part, is um, 
uh, we have more the more uh, the less critical for the sediment. Okay. And so touch it, sorry, touch it on this one. So it means that in different zones we have we have different critical situations. Yes. Yes, near yeah. near near the the sea, yeah. near the sea, it's a. Uh, yeah. We have always more critical situations, even in smell problems. Also. Yes. And highest David, more, 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 the lowest part, the David increases. Mm -hmm. I think when you had a, you had a, a slide on the, the expected benefits, did we? With, are these, with, with, is there an order here? Is um, safety and well being of the, Worker on the part of the top, or how would these be actually structured? And the second part of that would be there's some of them. The let me see the cost reduced the reduce reduce odors and overflows. Is that actually measurable from the solution which is to be put in place, or would that that would be like a secondary consequence of the solution being put in place, perhaps? Uh, I haven't prepared this slide, but in my opinion, all the entrance has the same uh, importance. I think they're not ordered in, in order of importance. It's not uh, important to solve the first, the second, the third. No, for me, there is no order. I'm not sorted. For me, it's so important to have a real uh, robot, uh, another robot that can uh, smell or reduce the odors or to be cost effective. Um, this is my opinion, but from the te technical point of view. But uh, I want to hear from your opinion. If you can uh, improve the inspection and the cleaning of the sewer system, it's a, it's a consequence that is uh, re maybe reduce the odors and overflow. As a general answer, uh, I understand that the super robot, it's impossible to, to be done. A robot that smells to be under, under water and high the slopes and so on, this is completely impossible. And we understand as uh, techniques that uh, one product like this, it's quite impossible or impossible. And then for this question, I want to encourage you in order that you prepare your proposal with uh, your requirements, saying this robot uh, will be able to attack this part of the problem and to reduce this question, or this another, 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 another. And then when you find your niche, try to prepare a very good proposal on your niche. If the niche is very uh, wide, that would be better for the project. But if you prepare a very restricted niche that only would be working under these conditions, but under these conditions, the objective will be fulfilled in 100%. That will be perfect for us. Don't try to find the super robot that works in under any conditions, but only working at 15%. That's not good. We prefer a robot with very high performance, even though only is working under restricted conditions. I think this is a, a sentence for encouraging you to prepare your proposals. Don't find a super robot. Just find a robot that works perfectly under your conditions, but in levels of performance more than 95%. This is what we are looking for. This is uh, what we said, the realistic expectations. Be real, please, Maria Luisa. Um, but I mean, the, the, the target is to have a robot that solves the problem. So if we are concentrating on a specific part of the problem, let's say, because we cannot produce the super robot, it would be nice to have a solution that taps a huge, huge potential part of the entire problem. So maybe we can also tackle this point when we are developing the, the challenge description. Give some background information on how the skill network in Barcelona is composed different environment aspects and then if we have to concentrate on a niche, which I, which I agree is, is, is something that, that there will be some restriction, would be good to concentrate on those parts which solve the problem to a high extent. 
just as a comment from my side, because what we want to have is product that can, or very something very close to a product that we can exploit afterwards. Exactly. At the end, we are looking for a product that could be exploited, produce it, yeah. and uh, not only working in Barcelona, but also in the, all the European cities. Uh, your, your question about the sewerage systems. The sewerage system in Europe is completely different in the United States, for example, there, there are new cities. When you are planning a city, you are really planning a, a sewerage system. Also, Here we have some uh, sewer systems from the Romantic age. And the circumstances are completely different. Our, our sewage network system, uh, for example, is different than in North Europe. Because uh, here uh, we have Mediterranean climate, uh, it rains a lot, uh, sometimes, few times, and so on. We have also um, now a lot of tourism in, in Barcelona, and so we are very, uh, uh, we have to manage uh, very well all the other uh, problem. So for us, it's also very interesting uh, this robot to to detect hydrogen sulfide and methane because it allows us to to detect the other problem. And we have a lot of demands of uh, citizens about the uh, problems of others. So, so we, if we have, uh, if we can detect that in a scientific or in a technical way, uh, it uh, must help us a lot. So um, just one additional idea that came to my mind. If you are submitting your proposal and you are concentrating on a niche, would be really, really very interesting for us to know the scalability. So if you have a solution for a specific part of the problem, yeah, it would be really, really nice to know what has to be done on top <coughs> to solve other parts of the problem as well. So that at, potentially at a certain point we have a pool solution that can solve the entire problem and if you could like explain that in your proposals scalability is a very important thing thank you very much Rich, for this uh, one is important the, the last question yeah. uh, i think an important part of the success of the project comes from the integration in the operations and do you have any feedback on what your operators expect or uh, in terms of logistics, but also in terms of uh, operation, is direct interaction with the robot, if there should be any, and how do you expect to receive this data? Well, we expect uh, that, uh, that the robot no, arrives maybe in some areas, <coughs> some uh, problematic areas that uh, there is a risk no, for the people that work inside, and uh, the robot can arrive uh, to this. To this uh, these areas, no, for example, no, and, and and to avoid that, uh, that, the, that the, the people who, who work inside that uh, go inside the, the, the network in these cases. No? No, but it's, a, it's a very, I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, question because we are now working with the CASA in one side of the table and with robotics uh, technician uh, researchers in the other side in order to arrive to a description of the challenge that could be uh, could have solution and uh, this is our work during the last months and we uh, will keep on uh, in this kind of uh, meetings i think they are very nice and we have not uh, in, in we have not discussed about uh, that perhaps the robot is uh, a robot that an inspector is uh, carrying uh, with him and uh, use it only for uh, some uh, situation, some uh, dangerous situation. Research. We are uh, speaking all the time around uh, autonomous robots uh, that you leave, no? you blah, 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 you go down and, blah, and the robot go very yeah, autonomous. Uh, we are speaking about uh, autonomy and this kind of thing. So this is an idea I think is very important to know also. If uh, the relation between uh, robot and inspector could save us some uh, of, of the objectives that we have. We are open. Yes, yes. To this, the is, this is the default system. Yes, yeah. it's very interesting. Yes. But anyway, we are looking for uh, proposals that go further the state of the art.
the state of the art right now in Chevrolet systems is just a camera aboard a crawling robot uh, with a cable sending images to a monitor and someone in a, in a van uh, monitoring the images and uh, you arrive uh, with a big uh, sediment, the, the robot stops and now it's, it's, it's recovered again. Huh? We are looking for something uh, beyond the state of the art. Perhaps we can prepare, Maria Jose, a, a case study that, for example, in healthcare you have prepared a history, no? a, a history about the inspector, a, a history that uh, no, give us the information about what the inspector is doing. In, we have seen perfect in the video, but perhaps the different uh, facilities, the different... Spend the day with inspector. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 It's an a use case in order to know the history of mm -hmm. uh, them. Yeah. One day we, we was a question. Yeah, but I think you answer that. I think you also you already answered that because I was going to go further on his question. And saying if you were expecting to have, the, for instance, the images or the data in real time or you expect the robot to go back and download information somehow? It depends on the ability of the robot. It's not necessary to have uh, images on real time. You can store the, the images in, in some hard disk and you can start recording uh, high definition for hours in a disk of terabytes. Why not? Yes, yeah, so then you are not expecting to control the robot. Could be self-controlled. Could be self-controlled. You can be doing some Islam and some creation of, of any kind of map that the robot is, is able to, to know its location in the map. Why not? Because it's, it's open. Don't, don't narrow your mind. Um, now, uh, <clears throat> because it was about the uh, cost of the uh, inspections, something important. So, do you expect the robot to be able to perform? Uh, high-level uh, planning of uh, the inspection or uh, a high-level plan will be provided from the users, I mean, from the inspectors for the robot to perform? I mean, uh, or is it something that the robot has to plan uh, in its own? Uh, this is in the area of cartography, I understand. No? Yes. Uh, well, right now there's a, a map of the sewers and the map is not very well cartographed. There's some problems on the cartography. It's very also well. Some, it's very well. No, no, it's very well, but there are there are some some singular elements that is, is necessary to improve. We, we have uh, all the cartography of the city of Barcelona. It takes a uh, a very long uh, period since uh, the Olympics, maybe from mm -hmm. now. There are uh, uh, no. uh, <laughs> before. Before. Uh, before there are uh, uh, hard uh, words for, for this this part, but sometimes there are big infrastructure that is necessary to, to have more detailed information. <laughs> and it's in this order the cartography that we, we try to explain. Okay, uh, so I, I guess some parts of the sure infrastructure have a greater importance or uh, they need more frequent uh, inspections than mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. So this can be uh, implemented as a high level uh, protocol in the in the robot or the uh, the inspectors can provide this information. I mean, it, uh, what is your approach? You want it to be implemented in the robot or the robot has to decide by, by itself based on some information or you want to give it Mm. It's about the high-level planning that I'm asking. I, I want to understand what kind of high-level capabilities the robot would have. I think yeah, both both yes. both things would be interesting and possible. No? Uh, of course, we have information, and 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 and, and, and what the idea is to, to, to the inspections um, uh, uh, objectives is is to to know or to have uh, knowledge of the network and the, uh, the, the state of the ne of the network. No? Mm -hmm. the, and and the robot can maybe can help uh, to I don't know if you are thinking in in, in, in learning no in in, in in some learning or or, or or that the robot is autonomy and then have capacity to decide. Mm -hmm. well, it could be, it could be. But but um, the, 
uh, in the, the idea is that uh, you say the, the robot, which is the, uh, the... I think the knowledge of the network and the sewage, uh, it's from people. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can see more, uh, more a robot that uh, has a specific instruction in, in a specific area, mm -hmm. that uh, a robot that could, that can decide uh, by itself. Okay. So, and sometimes you have a, a problem, uh, not of sediment, but of oil. And sometimes you have a problem in a, in a in area that you have a lot of tourism and, and not in another area. So, so uh, I think the inspector uh, know the, the network and, and it's difficult to, to translate this decision to the world, I think. And maybe from a technical part, there is a way to do it. That, that, that's why I'm not. I'm not, I'm not All the other thing is, if you can say to the robot, you, you can pre-program it, which is the. Uh, the the, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. you can say, okay, uh, today uh, I'm interested that you go by here, by here, by here, by here. And you pre-program it, and then the robot goes alone oh, and, yes, and arrives to the place, and then, or come back, or you go there to, <laughs> to, to, to take the robot. No? I, I, okay. I all the sewer system network is categorized in a geographical information system and we can order to the robot go there or the other country. It's possible both. Or the robot loses, no? You lose inside the... If he loses, the yes, what is that? So you must, or, or, or we can be able to, to localize the, the, the robot or, or, or come back or, or, or recalculate the... The man goes to the street. <laughs> so in, in order to avoid this, we, there will be some right the tax yeah. and the, yeah. in some uh, specific areas of the sewage system. Please, Maria Luis. Um, if, if you have two different options doing things, um, I mean, in that case, another question that I would ask myself is the cost effectiveness. So which is the cost reduction that you achieve mm. with which solution? Okay. And if you find out that it is better to have an inspector included, in the, in the entire no. running system because the cost effectiveness is still higher than having a completely autonomous, autonomous system or something like that. This would be something that I would tell you that. Okay. 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 okay, last uh, question. Uh, last question. <laughs> I mean, as cost effective is, uh, effectiveness is, is an important thing of the project and there was also maximum price of the inspection once the robot is put on the, down the sewer. I wonder if the, on the on the technical details that you will be writing so that it will be available in one month, no, you said, there will be information about the economic costs of inspection. So people offering robotic inspection can evaluate which is the savings that the robot uh, will uh, will offer, no? Uh, and it's a question. Yes. I think should oh, be. Okay. okay. Okay, well, I, I suggest that you wait for the call and uh, we'll be very glad to answer all your questions when the call is open in order to, to help you improve your proposals. Thank you. Any public presentation from the people we have here? Yes, yes. Uh, we invite you to present yourself in order to create consortiums or to know one each other. And you are welcome to this table. Perfect. So good morning. So my, my name is Jose Maria Mirats. I'm the, the founder and the, the chief executive officer of a, of a company which, which is based in Barcelona. The name of the company is Inlock Robotics and uh, we are specialized in uh, in offering solutions of localization and navigation for autonomous robots. So we are very interested in this problem and we have experience in a lot of uh, robotic uh, problems that we have worked in the past, just for you to know our, our company.
Okay. Can you give us your? Uh, can you give? Yes, my web page. It's it's web web web. In lock in lock is inspection e i n lock is for localization. So l o c robotics uh, all together uh, dot com. So you can have the information of our company there. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So hello, my name is Irene Carlos, and um, since. This morning we were told that we may be able to do a small presentation. I do you have it? I have it here, so I'm going to make a small presentation. I work for a Spanish consultancy. We are based in Madrid, uh, and we provide a consultancy for the water and the ICT sectors. So. It's not, it's not what I see in the screen is not what is there. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. So as I said, we are a consultancy uh, in the water and the ICT sectors, and uh, we belong to a group that is on a CTF group, and the, on the map you can see all the all the locations where we can, where we are. So, but coming back to ACIM, the, the Water and ICT Consultancy, here you have an, an overview of what we do. Uh, regarding the hydraulics uh, part, sorry, uh, we do engineering services for planning, operation, and control management of water networks, either uh, supply and sanitation, either wastewater network, which is what is interesting here. We do hydraulic modeling and uh, we work with decision support systems and operator performance auditing. And regarding the ICT, we have a telecommunications department. Uh, we specialize in wireless sensor net network, control and data collection, and uh, radio, spect radio spectrum management and planning, such as smart cities and satellite networks as well. But what I think is interesting here is that we, we have great experience working on the sewer networks. We do hydraulic modeling where we use data from the CCTV. That's what uh, Anthony was mentioning, the, the CCTV with the cameras and the wire on the, in the van. So we use, it, we use it. And we also uh, work on leakage, leakage detect, detention, detection and localization services, uh, yeah. do on-site the surveys for the GIS. So we do the inspection of the sewers. Uh, for doing the inspection of the sewers, we currently use uh, Winca. Uh, we are suppliers of Winca, but what's important here is that we help them to 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 the definite with the definition of the requirements for this. So and I think if I understood properly that what the Casa is asking here is for a huge upgrade of what we have right now, of what uh, most of the sewer inspectors are using. Uh, so we can provide with the knowledge of the, of the sewer system of very many very different cities. In between that, I, we can include that we have some very slight knowledge of the Barcelona uh, sewer system and, well, and many other cities with their own uh, Problem, problems. And regarding the communications, I think there might be some useful skills here as well because uh, well, we can we have experience on the data analytics, for instance, or decision support systems. Also on the uh, inputting the data into the GIS system. And I think that's all. And also, as well, we have uh, experience on European projects, so we we can provide this experience to with elaborating the proposals. And we are used to work with the European Commission, so this is also something that we can bring into the consortium. So there are my contact details over there, but I have cards as well that I would like to give you later. So if you find that interesting, thank you. Thank you, Irene. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let's, let us uh, introduce our, ourselves. We are here, there is Dr. Anthony Justa and Dr. Cesar uh, Galve from uh, Fundació San Antonio Abad uh, in Villanova, Gabá, no? and uh, I am Caterina Sampol from Aquas, from uh, an agency of the healthcare department. Uh, we together will try to 
to lead this challenge with um, Marie Louise and all the Eco team. And uh, well, uh, on the 3rd of December, we will have uh, another market consultation in Munich, where, uh, like today with uh, with Sewer, uh, will be a deep uh, a deep insight in, in our challenge and with more technical more technical uh, aspects of uh, the challenge. But we 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 thought uh, with uh, that it would be useful to 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 show you our challenge today. Well, what is the comprehensive geriatric assessment? It's an intensive and interdisciplinary process that aims to assess the functional status of the elders. And it includes a lot of aspects of uh, the, the, an elder functionality, like psychological, psychical, economic, environment, uh, behavior, uh, the cognitive, uh, uh, capabilities of uh, the elder and things like that. That means that the the multidisciplinary team is really neat for this assessment. So, but this is a, a process that is uh, is very very large and uh, can involve a lot of tests, but is the most useful tool we now have uh, to planning the elder care, a personalized elder care. Uh, and uh, we have found, uh, not, not we, <laughs> the world has found uh, that uh, there are a lot of benefits with this assessment for patients mainly, because they are given the right uh, clinical treatment and diagnosis. And they have also uh, greater functional uh, autonomy at hospital discharge. Because with the assessment, we know what exactly fits to that person. Uh, and we also find if there are contradictions with the uh, drugs they are having to, to, to take and the treatments they, they need. And we decide, the multidisciplinary team is deciding which are the best, uh, the best for this passion, no? Okay. And, uh, well, also they have less need to income in nursing homes. So they, they we, we can say that the life is better, no? Improves the, the daily life. But furthermore, um, there are reductions uh, in in the system because uh, the the complications like deliriums and impatient in, infections are reducing very much with this kind of uh, team uh, be, uh, be, uh, yes approach and also the mortality decreases very much and the costs the the global the overall cost are reducing very much also. Well, as I told you, there, this uh, assessment includes a very wide range of tests that now there are no robotics in, included in these, uh, in these tests. And we are aiming for uh, introduce robotics in these tests and to improve, of course, the health of, of com, uh, outcomes for these frail elders. Well, why? Uh, simplifying evaluations, helping us to improve diagnosis and therapeutic decisions, increasing quality of our results, and also we want to integrate uh, the robotic in the process by getting scoring, encoding data from patient during the, 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 the whole process, and also displaying results and recording the patient with audio and video uh, during the whole process. That will, uh, will uh, free uh, resources from the, the, our team, and then that will all 
allow also that this team to to have more accurate data to to have uh, the core di diagnosis so i don't know if you want to add something you are the experts <laughs> in geriatrics so um we came uh, a group in two main benefits if we uh, get uh, to be able to include or involve uh, some robotic device in, in that process uh, we uh, spend a lot of time in that uh, all the tests we need to do with the patients uh, we usually spend more or less 50 percent of the time uh, doing the test uh, we're just filling the data in the computer uh, we need to interact with the computer and not with the patient uh, the patient um, a lot of time uh, is waiting uh, for us but we need to um, uh, do some task with the computers uh, the time is more is one of the most important uh, problems we, uh, for us during the usual clinical practice. Uh, the other issue uh, we can improve, uh, uh, including a, a robot device, uh, maybe the, the quality of the clinical interview, uh, because uh, we uh, spend uh, time uh, seeing the computer, seeing the, the machines, the devices, and we lost uh, the wider visual contact with the patients. And the, the patients uh, at the end of the interview uh, many times uh, have the feeling, uh, I don't know, the, the interview uh, was between the, the doctor and the computer, but uh, they um, didn't see me. Um, it's uh, a real problem uh, we, we have uh, probably with the, the, in the usual practice. Uh, the challenge and maybe um, uh, focus in, in that uh, two two uh, roles uh, to uh, perform a, a robot uh, device who um, can uh, or who is able uh, which is able to uh, register or to um, do tasks which uh, we usually uh, do with the computer. Uh, so, <laughs> That's our <laughs> introduction. It's only a bit of uh, what you will uh, can uh, know better in, in December in Munich. Maybe just one. There will be live streaming as well. So if you are not available for traveling again, um, you, you will get. I mean, if you are interested, just can contact us and we will give you the address, the access, and you can take a look at what we are doing in Munich on the 3rd of December. Yes, also everything will be available in the ECHO uh, website, so we will have updates of everything. And also um, a video on the challenge will be available mm -hmm. to explain. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, your presentation, I, I, I don't have really clear what what is the the, the final outcome of this. Uh, I mean, are you looking for uh, adding new uh, software capabilities to existing platforms, like for example, the peer two that, that appears there, or the robot from the from Hopper Institute, which are really big, uh, very nice uh, robots, which can uh, uh, interact. interact with with other people, or you are looking uh, for very new and different uh, hardware platforms itself. We are not uh, looking for a, a platform. We are looking for something, uh, something for us is <laughs> that help us uh, during the assessment, during the whole assessment. We, we want to be looking at the patient and we, we need to be sure that there is something that is recording everything, every data, everything. And also, uh, maybe if uh, it is something um, user-friendly for the elders, uh, it can interact with the, the elder, but it's not necessarily 
something that is a, a yeah, but that can be based on an existing thing. I mean, for example, yes, yes, of uh, course. Uh, yes. You know, the, the, this part, the part of scene. Yes. Now, now the, the systems now is in the, in the therapy, mm -hmm. but not in the diagnosis. Yeah. Now. But um, uh, we we think uh, it's very interesting the interaction that these uh, that these uh, devices. But the uh, elders, your um, your opinion is uh, their opinion is the devices is no anthropomorph, uh, no more. Intelligent, no, 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 no. no it's uh, 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 with with errors. Yeah, with, with errors. errors. It has to have it's errors. It's similar to empathy, but no, no empathy. But uh, no, 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 okay, no, no, small, no, very big. Uh, for for uh, it's very interesting that the, the robotical is near to the professional uh, with the, the patients uh, with the family in the in the side. May, may I add? Yes, you can use whatever technology you would like to. As long as the challenge is completed, the need of the public body is fulfilled, and the cost restrict, restrictions are respected. So this, it's, it's more or less the same approach as we have seen today. Um, we'll have in Munich, we'll have someone who, from the medical field who would explain uh, in detail what exactly the problem is and which kind of, uh, or for which, which we would like to have a solution. And you will also have, with the challenge documents, you will have the possibility to uh, calculate the, the cost effectiveness. And if a hospital is willing, or you think that a hospital is willing to do the investment in buying some sort of devices which are interacting with the patient and that solves the problem and it is cost effective, you can propose that. Yes. So, um, from what I understand, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. What you are looking for is uh, something like a user interface, basically a more uh, maybe evolved user interface uh, to serve as uh, an intermediate between the patient and the, and the doctor. And it's an, not, assistant. An, assi and, an assistant. An assistant. And if for me, it's not clear that this thing should be a robotic. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a software. No, it will no. be a robotic solution because it is a robotic yeah. call. Yeah. That is the restriction that we have. It okay. will be, it is It is something we are, we are running a robotic call. Um, the intention is to use robotics technology for specific challenges. We have had 89 days in healthcare. We have robotics experts selecting the challenge, and this is the challenge that has been selected. And what we are looking for is robotics technology to solve the challenge. Um, I mean, it is not clear for me where the robot comes into into play here. Uh, uh, the it's robot the comes <laughs> during the whole the whole visit and the whole assessment can be in the whole is at, at the beginning when the patient is coming with the the relatives or the the, the person that are with them, collecting the first data and uh, answering some. Uh, um, uh, questions uh, that, that the robot are uh, are giving them, and then to be the 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 colleague of the patient with the team because it's a multidisciplinary team, and they will have to pass several tests, and this robot will be a recording maybe uh, this, this, a, a new a new professional. This is the robot. Yes, is a new member of the team okay. that will be the whole time with the patient. That is our ambition. If, if, I, if I would, let's say, think about submitting a proposal, what I would pro probably do is to analyze the cycle of the different tasks that are completed and the time that is needed for the different um, for the different cycles. And then the question is where you can use the technology in order to save more time from the uh, from the professional staff or the patient, and to take the therapy or the the the, the recording uh, load and so on and so on and so forth from the professional um, people, so that they can spend more time from with the patient and also reduce the time in total that they have to spend. 
So this is really something where cost effectiveness is really, um, again, an issue. And um, yeah, so this would be probably what I would do. I would take a look at the circle of different activities and then try to analyze where I could have the, the, next, the most important impact. And that's why we will record the, 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 the cycle of the assessment, because it's good to, to have a look of what are we speaking about. The assessment will always be performed in a hospital environment. There, there is no requirement for it to be. No, uh, for no us is a, a help for the hospital assessment. No, not the uh, not the in at home. But uh, if you have some idea, we are open also. No, Mary Louise. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, so what yes. we what will, um, I mean. According to my perception of the situation, what we would like to have is a robotic solution at the end, which frees, to a certain extent, um, the professional staff for taking, having more time with the patient, and all the, the activities that can be taken over by any kind of robotics technology um, should be, let's say, taken away from the professional person and um, be done by, <coughs> by a ro robotic technology. Um, and then the, the question is um, how, how the investment that you have to do as a clinic at the beginning, um, the return on investment that you have. So th this would be the kind of, of, of ideas that I would have when I was <coughs> thinking about submitting a proposal. So it is really something that we want to implement, exploit at the, at the end which brings cost effectiveness and increases the, the, the value for the patient. That is, I think, the last question. Just maybe the last question. Uh, so it means that uh, there's not an, uh, an expert system uh, uh, behind uh, for, uh, for get some decision. It's, uh, the no. final decision is is for, uh, is for the team because the team will evaluate uh, will evaluate what is the the best way to 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 diagnose the the, the patient. For sure, maybe the, there will be two two drugs they are the patient is taking that uh, one of them are contradictory. So this decision won't be in the robotic side. Will be on the on the multidimensional the professional because when you speak well or maybe for simplifying an evaluation so it means that you have to have some uh, have, have, have to collect some uh, objective uh, data not subjective data no? it means uh, uh, imagine if i get uh, the, uh, the interview of the pension the patient uh, i can understand uh, the, directly from him uh, what is uh, saying instead of some other people in the middle that say something maybe understanding uh, wrong uh, some words or something you know? well th there will be also but when the patient arrives maybe a first uh, little check of uh, questions can be fulfilled okay. no uh, uh, that and uh, the maybe if the robot is uh, uh, friendly enough uh, can establish an empathy with the patient that and uh, I don't know what that's uh, what can be imagined no around uh, in this sense but it's something like that not uh, to interview the patient the, the interview will be the real interview will be done by a specialist in each of the fields of the of the assessment but the robot can help in the whole process. Now, not, not now there are software in the uh, interlife, it's an uh, um, software, uh, an objective software for the uh, making this decision making, okay? But uh, I think it's uh, another situation, it's the interactions, the, a new a, a new professional is the robot in the team for the organization. But we are expecting you in Munich. <laughs>